This video will be spawning in zombies, giving our players some health and a way to fire bullets with their handgun. So let's get started. To get started, we're going to open up our web browser and we're going to go into open game art. And that's how we're going to be finding the three sprites we're going to be using this episode. For this episode, we're going to be looking for ammo, a zombie, and a health bar. Now that we've found the three sprites we're going to be using, I'm going to go through them. Here we have a top-down zombie which has all the animations we need, from the moving animation and an attack animation. Here we have some ammo which we're going to be using as the bullet which our player is going to be firing. And we have a health bar which is going to be indicating the health that our player has. So let's go ahead and unload them. Now that we have our files downloaded, we're going to unzip the pressed file. And now that we have our files uncompressed, we're going to go back into Scratch. Now we're going to import the sprites we've just downloaded. Down at the bottom right corner here where it says choose a sprite, we're just going to go up here where it says upload a sprite. And we're going to upload our sprites. So we're going to upload our ammo and we're going to upload one variant of the health bar. We're also going to be uploading our zombie. So we're just gonna select the first one. Now our zombie is a bit too big, so we're going to make it a bit small. I'm going to make it as small as we did our players, 35. And now our zombie is the same size as our player. Now we're going to move our health about to the bottom right corner and we're going to select our ammo. We're going to rename our ammo to bullet and rename our zombie into zombie and rename our health bar to health bar. Now that everything is nice and clean, we're going to go into our bullet and edit our bullet sprite. So as we can see here, we're at the code area of our sprite, but our sprite actually has two other areas. It has a costume area and a sound area. So right now we're going to be editing the costume. So as you can see here, the costume is the image that the sprite uses. We're going to delete two bullets and we're going to remain with one. So I'm going to stay with the bottom one and delete the top two. And then I'm going to select the bottom one and center it into the middle. And then I'm going to shrink it a little bit. Now that it's smaller at a better size, we're going to go into the code and we're going to give the player a way to actually fire the bullet. So we're going to, we're going to go into event and when flag clicked, and then we're going to pull the forever loop. And we're going to say that forever, if we go into sensing and say, if the mouse is down, then we're going to create a clone. And a clone is basically a copy of the sprite. So we're going to create, create a clone of the bullet. And then we're going to bring up the, when I start as a clone block. And we're going to say that once the bullet starts as a clone, we're going to say repeat until, and then we're going to go into motion and select move 10 steps. So we're going to go back into sensing and say repeat until touching the edge, or so we find the or block in operators. So we're going to say repeat until touching edge or and we go back to sensing and say if we're touching the edge or if we're touching the zombie. So we're going to continuously move 10 steps until we touch the edge or the zombie. And once we finally do touch the edge or the zombie, then we want the clone to delete itself. So we're going to select delete this clone. And we're going to go to the wait one second and have a little bit of a wait before it actually deletes itself. So 0 0.005 should be fine. So now let's see how the let's actually shoot. Well, that's kind of weird. It's not actually shooting from the gun. That's because we missed a few things. We should go back into motion and make sure that once we actually start as a clone, we start at the player. And we want it to point towards the crosshair. So we'll make it point towards the mouse pointer so that it's pointing at the direction we want it to fire it. 
now that we see we have our bullets firing but it's more in a wavy format not actually firing a gun as more guns shoot in this manner so what we're going to do is we're going to go into bullet and go to control we're going to go to the wait one second block and we're going to place it right here where it says create a clone of myself so we're going to wait 0 0.5 seconds before creating another clone and now we see that we have our bullets moving at a better way than before so we're going to make the bullets move a bit faster and yeah that's a bit better now another thing we need to do is hide the original bullet because as you can see here although we're firing the bullets the original bullet isn't actually disappearing because we never actually made it disappear so we're going to go into looks and right here we see two blocks show and hide so we're going to see that when the flag is clicked we hide the original bullet and then we're going to show it when it starts as a clone so now we have our bullets firing at a consistent rate so if you want you can play around with the wait seconds so you can change the fire rate of the pistol if you would like now we want to actually have our zombie chasing us so we're going to go into our zombie sprite and we're going to go to control events we're going to go to events and select the when flag is clicked and we're going to see that when flag is clicked we're forever and then the wait block and we're going to say wait every three seconds we're going to then create another clone we're going to create a clone of myself the zombie and once we create the clone it's going to when i start as clone it is going to we go to motion and we're to go to motion and it's going to go to a random position so as we can see here the zombie could spawn in any position it's going to be unknown and then we're going to have it move one step as zombies are pretty slow and then we're going to have it point towards the player so we go back to events to control and we're going to for do this all forever now let's see how this looks now we got a clone of the zombie and we can fire at the zombies. So now let's go back to looks and make sure that we show the zombie when it starts as a clone and hide the original zombie. And another thing we want to do is add a bit of randomness to our game. So we're going to go to operators and we're going to go to pick random. So we're going to choose from anywhere from three to five seconds we're going to create a clone of the zombie. Now we want a way for the zombie to actually die. So we're going to go to control and we're going to say when I start as a clone and we're going to select a forever loop and say if the zombie touches a bullet, so back to sensing and say if the zombie is touching a bullet, then all we do is we go to control and delete this clone. So now let's see how that runs. Oop, we got a zombie chasing us. Pow, now the zombie's dead. Now we see that the bullets are actually going through our zombie. And let's stop this. So now that we're in the bullet sprite, what we're going to do is move the weight 0 0.05 seconds and we're going to create a new block when I start as a clone and we're going to go to the forever loop and say when the bullet touches we're going to say that when the bullet actually touches the zombie or the edge then we're going to do this delete the clone so we go to if and then go to operators and we're going to say that if we're either we go to sensing and say if we're either touching the edge or if the bullet is touching a zombie then we'll go ahead and delete the clone so now let's go ahead and see what happens here now we see that our bullets aren't going through the zombies as they did before 
Now, there will be a weird glitch that will happen. Let's wait for a zombie to come to us. And we can see that our zombie is kind of doing this weird vibration once they get a little too close. And this is because if we go to our zombie sprite, we have it forever pointing towards the player. So once our zombie, let me bring it and show it. If our zombie actually touches the player, it want to face left because that is the turn of the player to the zombie. So let's hide that again and let's fix that. So what we're going to do is go to our events and make sure that you only move one step and point towards a zombie if we're not touching the player. Now that will fix the bug which we just had now. Now the next thing we want to do is our health bar. So now that we see we've only imported one costume for the health bar. So we can go to the bottom left where it says choose a costume and upload the rest of the costumes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select the rest of the costumes and have it go from 10 to, a, to 100. So now that we have that set up, we're going to now create a script which control the health shown on the health bar. So in order for us to have our health bar actually displaying the health that our player has, we're going to use variables. So just a quick explanation on what a variable is. A variable is used to store information. It can store various data from numbers, words, or if a condition is true or false. If our player is attacked by a zombie, they will lose health and we store the health in our health variable. If our player is to lose health, then we would edit our variable by making it smaller. So what we're going to have to do is create a brand new variable and we're going to call it health and make sure that it's selected for all sprites as more than one sprites are going to be accessing this variable. So go ahead and click OK. And now we're going to just unselect health as we're going to be showing health from the health bar. Now what we're going to do is go to our zombie and we're going to make the zombie decrease the health of our player. So what we're going to do to make our zombie actually take away health from the player is we're going to go to our control and select when I start as a clone and then bring up the forever loop and then bring up the if statement. So then we're going to say that if we touch the player, then we're going to go to control and we're going to wait one second. And once that one second passed and we're still touching our player, so we're going to select if touching the player so if we're still touching the player after that one second has passed, then I'm going to change health by negative 10. We're going to show the health variable up at the top right, and we're going to go to health bar and go to events. When flag is clicked, we set health to 100. So now that we have our health edited, we're going to now need to edit the health bar. We're going to go to events and we're going to start broadcasting a message. So we're going to go to when I receive, create a new message and call this health loss. And once our player loses health, we're going to then decrease the health bar. So we're going to go into looks and then switch costume. And then we're going to select costume number and go into our operators and select the subtraction operator. So we just select subtract by one. So whenever the health bar is told that, hey, our player has lost some health, then we just subtract our costume number by one. So here we start at costume number 10. If you subtract it by one, go to costume number nine. So now we're going to go to our zombie we're going to want to go to events and then we're going to broadcast health loss. Go to health bar and we're going to go to looks and switch costume 
to help 100% when the flag is clicked. So now let's stop the game and we're going to deselect the health variable and we're just going to show the health bar. We're going to go to the health bar and we're going to go to looks and we're going to go to layer and we're going to make at the beginning of the game we're going to push the health bar up by a couple of layers forward so that it's in f the very front of the game so that if a zombie were to walk over it they would be behind it so let's try to lead a zombie behind and we can see yes our zombies are behind the health bar so thank you for watching this video make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next part of this tutorial where we'll be creating collectibles so that our player can pick up health or pick up ammo so make sure you stay tuned for that thank you for watching